to talk about a couple of techniques which are server-side. They apply on any platform. They use really simple technologies. They'll work in every browser. And it's about helping you out in terms of how you actually go and run a site. So here I've got my awesome auction site. It's running on mysite.com. It's in production. And uh, I've got a little JavaScript clock that's clicking down, the official bid time. I need to go and diagnose this. And there's something specific about how it's running in production. Now my JavaScript, if I go into the scripts part and drop it down, it's all combined and minified and I can't get into it. So I could go and, uh, and I can't reproduce this problem in dev, so I could go and change the production site to stop using minified scripts or something, but that's going to be messy. So really simple technique, but how many people actually do this, is just using a query string where I can go in and say config-js mode equals dev on any page of my site, and then what actually then happens down the scripts panel is I go and start emitting the non-minified, non-combined versions of it. Simple enough. Going and extending this a little bit more though, I can actually go and say js mode equals off, in which case I don't go and emit any script, and I can see the non-JavaScript behavior of this page. Now I might not need to use that as a developer because I've got a great little toolbar up the top where I can go and do that, but this is great for things like functional tests. So getting a little bit further into this though, the problem is that if I go and click a link to some other page on my site, I lose that query string parameter straight away. And if I want to go and do something with this experience, I've, uh, I want that to persist. So what I'm actually going to do is just create a cookie. I'm going to say config js mode uh, for my site session, and then in here I can go and say I want the dev mode, put that cookie in place, and now as I go and click around my pages, I'm going to keep getting the dev experience for that. Demo fail number one of the night. Anyway, so I'm going and getting that coming out there. So I can go and hold on to, uh, I can use that cookie. Now the other thing I can actually do though is uh, we like this idea of continuous deployment and continually pushing up whatever the latest version of our code is. We have this problem where marketing go, oh, you can't launch that until the launch date, but we really want to get it up there. So we've got these config settings that we want to go and use to turn on and off different parts of our site. So we can deploy it, but not necessarily turn them on. So I can actually go and use these cookies to do something like question mark config super, I'm going to reference my notes so I get the right bit, uh, where are we, secret product launch equals on, and when I do that, I go and get my new product link shows up up the top. So I'm able to go and preview how this is working uh, on the production site without going and exposing it to end users. So you've got to wonder a little bit about uh, other uses for this. So one of the other things I've got, because these are all cookies, I've got another little sister app called configurator.mysite.com where I can go in and control any of these settings. And I can go in here and I can just say, all right, I want to change my JS mode to dev and I want to set my secret product launched on. And what that's doing straight away in JavaScript is it's going and setting cookies locally. If I go back to my page and I go and load that up on the home page, there we go, it's, it's in the right script mode now. I got the cookie name wrong and we can see the new site link showing up. So this is the type of thing I can go and expose on my internal network for various people in the organization to be able to go and tweak these little parts on and off in the site. Let the marketing group turn features on and off. Let the CTO check out different features while it's all running in production. Now one of the interesting things you'll see here is I've got UTC now. In terms of testing this site, because it's a bidding site, I might want to see what happens once the auction's closed. So I can go and jump in here and just tell the server that the current time is the 4th of uh, October. And now when I go home, my clock says it's the 4th of October and it's moved forward. So I can actually wind the time backwards and forwards. Eh, a little security risk there. This is running on a large auction site in Australia, but we can go and wind the clock backwards and forwards. It doesn't work so well. So the way we secure this is by sending a buddy cookie along with it as well. When we send the cookie up with the setting, we send another one that has a digital signature applied to it, which basically the signature has to match, otherwise it won't apply that override. So this is something we can actually go and run in public, on the public internet, allow us to turn different features of the site on and off on demand. And we can go and use a little configurator tool like this, which we can control access to, the rotating key, all fairly secure. So a simple technique, it's plainly obvious in hindsight, but I found it quite powerful in development. So that's what I know. Thank you.